All right, guys, so now it is Tuesday. Let's see how yesterday's diet, cardio, and everything affected my weight. So, one seventy six point six pounds, which is not bad, considering yesterday I was about one was like one seventy seven point six one seventy seven point four something like that, plus today I'm wearing underwear, so that's like point two pounds or something you know I gotta factor that in very happy with that, and uh let's keep it going. All right guys, back from work, it is about one o'clock and it's time for my meal. No, I'm just kidding, not yet. Um, that's right, I'm still intermittent fasting and I probably won't have another meal until after the gym, which is what we're doing right now. But for my pre-workout kind of regime, regimen, whatever the word is, I want to show you guys. So I take this big ass thing of water, it's a my protein half, half gallon jug, so it's like a liter and a half or something. Then what I am doing today is, first of all, creatine, I take five grams of that. And um, you can take creatine before workout, after workout, in the morning, at night, doesn't matter. Some people consider creatine to be a pre-workout supplement. And in fact, lots of times creatine is found in pre-workouts, but it doesn't have to be. The only reason I'm taking right now is simply for convenience because I don't wanna be taking, you know, later I'm gonna have a protein shake and right now I'm having my pre-workout and then I have, gotta have my creatine. No, if I could, I just mix everything all, you know, up together, but I don't wanna have a protein shake pre-workout because I just don't feel like it. And plus I'm still fasting. So I take creatine right now simply for convenience because um, there is, you know, really no benefit to creatine being a pre-workout supplement. Creatine needs to saturate in your muscles, which takes days, if not like a week or more, which is why there's that whole concept of the loading phase in the beginning. So if you stop taking creatine for a couple days, you're not going to notice anything. And if you start taking creatine, you're not going to notice anything for a couple days. So if you do it pre-workout, like, oh, 30 minutes, it doesn't matter. So I'm doing that. I'm also adding beta alanine. Uh, some people, this is a very common product or common um, ingredient found in pre-workout supplements, but I don't, recently I haven't been buying like the fancy pre-workout supplements because they're like 60 bucks for like one jar and I don't know, I just don't see the point. So I actually got the raw ingredients myself. This, I mean, obviously I didn't buy it because my protein sends everything for free because I love them. But if I did buy it, it's legit like eight bucks or something and I've had this for months because it's much easier to buy raw ingredients as opposed to like and when you guys think about it, pre-workout supplements is just kind of like, take all this stuff for cheap, which you can buy in like these little boring bags, combine it all together, jack up the price by 300%, paint a really pretty colorful picture on it, and then, you know, charge me a lot. And nothing wrong with that, and, you know, it's convenient because you don't have to get all these random things put it together, and it still works, but I don't see the point. Then what I'm doing is simply a caffeine pill. This is 200 milligrams of caffeine, um, which is a good amount. That's pretty much the exact same amount that you would find in normal conventional, um, uh, pre-workout supplements so when you combine the caffeine with the you know the creatine and the beta alanine you pretty much have like at least from an ingredient standpoint 90% of the exact same stuff you would find in conventional pre-workout supplements so you know and it's a lot cheaper and easier and that's it throw it in here drink it up and um, that's pretty much it guys also make sure you drink a lot of water um, a lot of times people have poor workouts, they think, oh, I didn't eat enough or I didn't sleep enough. Yeah, that may be the case, but lots of times it's because you're simply dehydrated. So when you wake up and throughout the day, pre-workout, during workout, keep drinking water. Either way, guys, that is it. Today we're going to hit chest day. Can you see it? Try to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. A few moments later. <gasps> For my first meal of the day, it's about... So I've got three separate like little things here, not just one big meal. I don't really do that these days because I'm trying to like save what macros I can get for like the foods that I really, really love. These days I don't eat something unless I really want it. This is not really an exception, but it's because I need to get it. This is just, we got 100 grams of chicken breast and some veggies with a little bit of barbecue sauce on them. This one is the one meal that I have to kind of eat just because I need to because of protein sources and because I need to get more fruits and vegetables. These days, because I'm cutting and I'm trying to like minimize my carbohydrate intake, unfortunately, I'm eating a lot less fruits, which is not good whatsoever. You want your health to be the you know, priority before anything else. So that meal, I just need to get out of the way. It's going to be the first one. Then afterwards, we get into the fun stuff. So I got these chicken wings, which I made. Um, it's just, you know, those ones that you like, they come frozen, you bake them. Either way, so there's six of them. They're small, but a great source of, what am I saying? Great. 
crappy source of food, but it comes with some protein and some fat because this meal has no fat. You know, I had some left over. And kind of for my third meal slash snack, I am having uh, some cereal. This is kind of like those, I don't know if you guys can tell. There it is. It's those mini wheats. And uh, I love them because they just taste so good with like the, especially when they soak in the water, sorry, soak in the, in the milk and then it come, kind of becomes like sweet. Right now I have a big sweet tooth. So for me, this is going to be like paradise. And I soaked it in, um, I'm not using regular milk. This is so, no, this is almond milk. So this is like unsweetened almond milk. It's super low in calories. It's like 60 for like, uh, you know, for a cup. So this is 60 calories from the almond milk, reasonable amount of carbohydrates. This is my only big carbohydrate source. Also a little bit of fiber. So you know, that's great. And then also I'm just gonna have like, you know, this is about a liter of water and that will be it. Great source, you know, they got three different things going on here. One for carbohydrates, one for protein and fat, and then one for protein and vegetables. All three gives you a fairly complete meal with a total calories and macros of. Also guys, for a snack I'm doing this is three protein muffin top blueberry extravaganzas. I don't know what to call them yet. I did a recipe video, so if you guys haven't seen that, go check it out here. But either way, they are fantastic macros. Each one of them is like seven grams of protein, like less than six grams of carbohydrates, maybe like two, two and a half grams of fat. So protein being the key, the highest macronutrient is great, especially for like, you know, like little kind of cookie style things either way. So I also put low sugar jam on two of them with a tablespoon each and then about 30 to 40 grams of vanilla Greek yogurt for an extra little kick of protein. So this meal's calories are... Alright guys, time for my dinner. Step one, chicken breast again. Warmed it up, threw it in there and um, here it is. Is it exciting? No, but whatever. It's great to source of protein. Then we threw some tomatoes in there because I need a little bit more veggies. And then we have this kind of pasta thing, which was actually, it's this. It's like this lean cuisine. It was pretty good macros. I see at the store sometimes. Uh, 250 calories, 30 grams of carbs, 19 grams of protein, 6 grams of fat. So to have food that you buy at the store, it's not like, you know, like specifically made to be like high protein or anything. And for it to have a 2 to 3 protein to carb ratio, not bad. I always look at that. I always look at ratios. So 2 to 3 uh, in terms of protein to carb, not bad. 1 to 1 in terms of carb to protein, that's excellent because... That could theoretically mean that if you were to eat that all day, you would finish off the day with 200 protein, 200 carbs, and that's fantastic. That's like dieting. 200 grams of carbs for a guy like, my, like me, which is around my target, maybe a little bit lower, that is excellent. If I had food like that, I would eat it breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day. All right, guys, the final meal of the day. Three more of these protein muffin things. We got one with a little bit of zero calorie, no, sorry, low sugar jam. Um, one with about, this is 50 grams of vanilla Greek yogurt and one with a tablespoon of zero calorie Walden Farms chocolate spread with some water and this will be Alright guys, so the final macros for the day are 198 protein, 59 grams of fat, 167 grams of carbohydrates, 2112 calories, and 41 grams of fiber, which is pretty damn low for me, but you know, me being several weeks into the diet to the point where I'm approaching 30 pounds of total fat loss from when I started at around 205, now I'm weighing in around 176, 177, 175, you know, bouncing around in that range and starting to hit a bit of a weight loss plateau, These, this is what you have to do. You have to get more aggressive. I wish I had the metabolism of some of these guys. Like, I see people smaller than me eating like 250 grams of carbohydrates and just dropping fat like crazy. I can't do that. So, you know what? Am I gonna sit around and cry and whine and be like, well, that's not fair. Does the world care? If I go to a competition, they're not gonna be like, well, how hard did you diet? How hard did you diet? No. What do you look like? End of story. I don't care if you did it on 400 grams of carbohydrates, on 50 grams of, car you know, grams of carbohydrates, on whatever. The world doesn't care. Same case with this, same case with anything, with your career, with studying. You just gotta do what you gotta do to bring your, phys your best possible physique. Is it fair? No, guess what? Life's not fair. Either way, this is an upper hypertrophy workout. I've talked about this in the past in my recent videos, how I, uh, I do push-pull legs, rest, and then I repeat that process. So I work out every muscle group two times every eight days, but I do not do the same workout every day. I have uh, heavier days where I may do something like a little bit more weight and I'll do three sets of eight, for example, on the bench press. And then I have 
uh, upper hypertrophy days or just hypertrophy days in general where I go for the pump, I go for maximal time under tension. I may hold the movements for an extra second or two to get that maximal crazy contraction and um, I will decrease the weight a little bit. So maybe I'll go from 225, which used to be light, but now that's my heavy days because again, your strength drops on a cut, but I'm not complaining. Again, that's the name of the game. But um, and then now I may drop down to like 185, but I'll like just bust out reps and I'll do this on the incline. I'll do like four sets of 10 to 12 reps, proper form, extra contraction at the top. I really hold it in, especially as you guys can tell right here on that upper pectoral region where I will li literally like just squeeze and hold it there just for like one Mississippi over my like final three, four, five reps. And it makes your pecs feel like they're gonna explode. It's friggin' awesome guys, I love it. Especially for example, when I do cable crossovers, I'll actually cross my hands over and like that, like that right there is, oh man, it's friggin' awesome. I highly recommend you guys try it. Next time you're working out, and if you feel like you're just throwing up the weight, yeah, you can do that on heavy days because we still wanna get that maximal stimulation, guys. You know, if you do like, you can drop the weight to like 10% of what you normally do and do a thousand reps. Are you gonna grow? No, you at that point, it's not even CrossFit. Like, that's just breathing and walking. It's like you opening a door or like, that's nothing. Your body's gonna get nothing out of that. But on the same, you know, on the other side, um, I don't always recommend just going heavy, heavy, heavy. I recommend sometimes doing these hypertrophy days, getting that maximal time under tension, that contraction. Train like a bodybuilder, not like a powerlifter. Or best case scenario, train kind of like both, kind of like a hybrid. That's why I do these heavy days and I do these hypertrophy days, you know, time under tension, whatever you want to call it. But the last thing I want to talk about before I close out this video related to macros, because today was kind of a food based video. This is something which really separates people who succeed and those who don't. And I see this with my clients, I see this with people who comment, I see this with my friends and my family. It's the concept of being extra conservative. So, for example, today, I, was, I love that jam thing. You know that low sugar jam I put on anything? And um, whenever I do it, I take like a glob and it's like, you know, you can say, okay, that's one tablespoon, I'll count that as one in my fitness pal. Is it really? Is it? Like, in my case, I'm like, no, I know it's not. I know I'm being a little, you know, extra. So at the end of the day, instead of saying, okay, I had three tablespoons, I, I put in my fitness pal, I put in five or six. And uh, a lot of people do this with like things like my uh, peanut butter, for example. You know, they'll take one tablespoon and they'll be like, that's one, right? That's, that's one serving. No, it's not, because if they were to actually weigh it out, they'd realize that it's like two or one and a half. And when you do that multiple times throughout the day, it's small stuff here or there, but they'll forget to track sauce because, you know, I'm not gonna track ketchup and ranch sauce. That's nothing. It's like, you know, 30, 40 calories. Or they'll, you know, they'll track only one tablespoon of this or that, when in reality it's probably two or three if they were to weigh it out. And all these things, they add up, and at the end of the day, congratulations, you're off by like 300 calories. Guys, do not do that. Your body's always gonna look for the path of least resistance, whether it be with training, where you start to cheat on your form, or whether it be, you know, with, uh, with dieting, where your body's gonna try to be a little bit, you know, extra lenient on yourself. Do not let it do that. When you are cutting, the longer you are cutting, the harder it is for your body to lose body fat, the more and more it's gonna resist, the more and more your mind's gonna to wanna to play tricks on you, the easier it is gonna be for you to just, you know, it's not like you're lying to yourself, but it's kinda of like you're under-exaggerating. You're kinda of like, oh, don't worry, relax. You know, you eat a slice of pizza and you're like, you have no idea what size is it, you know, size it is when you put it into my fitness pal, and you find like this size, which is like 800 calories, and this size, which is like 600 calories, and you're gonna be like, I don't know, so I'm just gonna go with a 600 one because, let's be honest, because you wanna eat more calories throughout the day. So you're always gonna try to be, you know, you're always gonna be inclined to be a little bit easier on yourself. Do not do that, guys. I would always rather be extra aggressive, extra conservative on myself, and perhaps, you know, go under my calories at the end of the day if I'm dieting, and then what's the worst that's gonna happen? I'm gonna diet faster? I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose body weight? Oh no, I got shredded so fast, oh no. As opposed to the alternative, where I go easy on myself, and every single like little you know piece of food throughout the day, it averages up to like an extra 300 calories, which I did not anticipate. And then I'm sitting here like, well, I don't know why it's not working. Is it maybe it's the you know the diet, or maybe it's, it's my genetics? It, it's the genetics. It's it's got to be the no, it's not. It's because you're lazy. It's be oh, I get it. I'm not yelling at, yelling at you guys. I'm just saying to myself. Sometimes I have to like knock it into myself and remind myself that like you need to be extra conservative on every single thing you do. I never, you know, go easy on myself when it comes to this stuff. And it sucks, yes, but I would rather overdo it than underdo it. A great example of this is uh, Jay Culler. If you guys don't know, he was a Mr. Olympia for four years, and he's one of the best bodybuilders of all time. He's doing a panel with him and a couple other bodybuilders, which, I'll be honest, I didn't know them because they were kind of like lower level guys. And someone in the audience asked a question to the panel, and he said, how accurate are you guys when it comes to tracking? Do you kind of just eyeball it, and do you just kind of eat as you go? 
or do you actually know all the numerical values of everything? And these other guys, you know, they each answered one by one. They kind of give these, you know, wishy-washy answers. Some guys are like, yeah, I track some stuff. Some guys are like, oh, I just eyeball it. Other guys are like, man, I just, you know, I just feel it out. They get to Jay Color and he just like looks at them dead in the eye and says like, I know and track everything. And that's it. That's it. And guys, that's what separates, you know, a regular dude working out to someone who's actually like fit and changing their lives and changing their bodies and looking better and better with every coming day, year, month, whatever. That's what separates, you know, them from a champion, someone who actually wins. That's what could separate you from first place and like sixth place at a show. And that is why guys, I'm so friggin' hard on myself because you know, now is crunch time. Now I'm approaching the best I've ever looked and I just wanna keep it going. I wanna look better than last year. I wanna find Igor from 2015 and just beat the shit out of him why? Because last year he was easy on himself. This year, that's not the case. And uh, I implore you guys to do the same. So always be extra conservative. You know, I'd rather overwork than underwork. And um, I really feel that's one of the key characteristics which separates someone who's just, you know, kind of, let's, you know, excuse my language, fucking around from someone who's actually a champion, who's actively pursuing their goals and getting better each and every day. Either way, guys, that's it. A little bit of ramble. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you in the next video.